ever wanted to fly the legendary Spitfire? Up until now, it's been a dream that few of us were likely to ever fulfill. It was also the driving force behind the creation of this simulator. Over the past three years, we've created an exact replica of the Spitfire Mark 9. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the systems of the aircraft. and By the end of it, you'll have a better understanding why this simulator is the next best thing to owning and flying your own Spitfire. While there are a growing number of Spitfires flying throughout the world, there are very few of us who could actually afford to fly one. The cost of a restoration is astronomical. Even if you were to be given a Spitfire, it would take a small fortune to simply run it. I'm an experienced tail dragger pilot, but I could never afford to do a course which would allow me to take a Spitfire up into the air. Yes, for a handsome amount, you'll be able to go up in a two-seater Spitfire. But even there, you will be given precious little stick time, if any at all. The world of virtual reality has introduced us to new possibilities. Simulation software is also becoming more and more realistic. The first time I flew the DCS World Spitfire Mark 9 in virtual reality, my mind was blown. I knew there could only be one improvement, a fully functional and accurate physical cockpit. The concept for heritage flight simulation was born. You might wonder why we went to the trouble of creating an exact replica if you can't see any of this detail once the VR set has been put on. But we want the experience to be real from the moment you swing your leg over the door and lower yourself into the seat. There must be no difference between the real world cockpit and the virtual one. Then once you slip the VR goggles over your head, a different world beckons beyond the canopy. You must be able to reach out and touch and operate all the controls, buttons and switches that you see before you. We believe we've achieved that all here in the HFS cockpit. It's been fully integrated into the virtual simulation worlds of DCS and Explain. I'll be talking of aspects of this in future videos, but for this session I'd like to focus on the systems and their functionality. Starting on the left hand side of the cockpit, and working our way around the cockpit, we have the engine cluster, uh, all the test switches, and starting off with the top one. It's a bit dark down there, but let's try. Uh, this is the oil dilution button. Note that when I open the cover, it opens up in the simulator as well, and that's done through a little magnet and a Hall effect sensor. When I depress the button, you can see that happening as well in the simulator. The next one is the supercharge. Now, when I press that, we should see the FS gear warning light come on. And there we can see that. And then finally, we have the test button for the radiator flap. And by pressing that, we should see the radiator flap extending on the outside, but difficult to see on the inside of the plane. Moving on, we have the, <clears throat> the rudder trim, and that has got one full turn. Then we've got the switch cluster down here which is the radiator flap on automatic. Um, currently it's on automatic when it's off and it switches to manual when I switch it on. Then the PITO heat button uh, switch and that's just to switch the PITO heat on when you are flying at altitude to prevent icing. And finally, the fuel uh, pump button, which is a little bit hidden underneath here, but switching it on, you can hear the fuel pump come on. And we'll switch that off for now. We then have the elevator trim. The elevator trim has got four full turns. And I'm just going to turn it all the way back. And that has a spiral mechanism which is exactly the same as per the original mechanism. 
Over here we have the um, carburetor uh, filter control. If we take off in dusty conditions or any conditions where we might get dust into the engine, then we would switch on the filter. And once we have taken off and we are out of the dusty conditions, we would switch it back off just to give us the extra power that we get from that. Next we move to the uh, throttle quadrant and the throttle quadrant has got the main throttle lever, uh, it's got the mixture control fuel cutoff switch over here. It has a little switch at the bottom uh, which comes on automatically when you switch, uh, when you push the uh, throttle forward. Uh, we'll test that just now and that just uh, initializes all the electric systems and over here we have the prop pitch uh, lever. Um, so we should put the prop pitch all the way forward, which is typical of the startup condition. We can move the throttle forward. Pushing it forward, the light should come on. And there we see it come on, uh, just indicating that the power circuits are now activated. We've also got a gate, which is a, a, a manual gate, and prevents the throttle lever from being pushed beyond the takeoff position. So uh, that is for combat. You would push it to the side and forward, and it would go into the combat setting. Over here, we have the magnetos, left and right magnetos. And then we have the radio with its various buttons. Up here we have the navigation lights. Over here we have the flaps, which go into the down position or into the up position. And over here we have the gun sight control which switches on and then the adjustment for the gun sight brightness. Then the gun sight itself has got range and base settings on it. In the corner we have the clock which we can wind by turning or by pushing the button in, we can actually adjust the time as well. We can close the nightshade cover for the undercarriage indicator by pressing this little button here. Over here we have the altimeter setting. And over here we have the gyro compass setting. Down there we have the brightness control for the cockpit lights. Moving on to the engine starter buttons. If I open them up, again the covers come off and I'm able to press the starter buttons. You can hear the engine turning over. And then down here we have the fuel cutoff switch. And over here we have the compass, it's also functional, can be turned. And then over here we have the primer, which can unlock and, and be operated. Down in the corner we've got the pressure valve for pressurizing the fuel tank and that is at higher altitudes. 
Over here we have the button to check the fuel level in the bottom tank. And this is the switch for the supercharger. Switch it to manual or to automatic. Moving on to the right hand side of the cockpit. We have the Morse code and that is operating the Morse code key. We can also select which way we want the lights to shine. We then have the wobble pump. And that is for getting fuel pressure up in the system initially. Down on this side we have the chassis control, so the undercarriage control. We won't activate that right now. But then we have the IFF system here with the channel A and channel B buttons. And during wartime they were able to destroy the IFF system in case that they uh, were captured. So they could open up the cover and press both buttons which would then activate the explosive device. Down in the bottom here we have the uh, washer fluid pump which you can switch on and then we have the jettison handle over here which can be set to the lock position and the jettison handle itself which can be pulled. On this side here we have a handle for adjusting the seat height and then over here we have the emergency chassis release so if your undercarriage gets stuck you would push this fully forward which would puncture the CO2 cylinder and then activate the undercarriage. In the corner here we have the oxygen main shut-off valve. Now that doesn't actually operate within DCS World but we have made it functional within X-Plane. Moving on to the flight controls. Here we have the control stick which moves forward and back. That is for the elevators and this is for the ailerons so your roll control and pitch control. Um, mounted on here we have the brake lever and that applies the brakes. Now by moving the rudder pedals you get differential braking. Then we've got the gun control here, the gun control buttons and that's for the cannon and for the machine guns. Top button is for machine guns, bottom button for cannon, and center button for both. And so that concludes the quick cockpit look around. We will be delving further into the HFS Spitfire Mark 9 cockpit in time to come. The next video will show the force feedback system. In other episodes, we'll explore the concepts of augmented virtuality, simulation software, and the build package. So please hit the subscribe button and give us your comments or questions.